G'day again guys and welcome to another YouTube lesson. Today we're going to take a look at finance and financial management strategies. This is our first lesson in strategies and it's important that we make sure we know what strategies are. That's the theme that runs through all of um, these particular um, dot points in the syllabus we're looking at. You need to define it and you also need to be able to say, often in some depth, it's often uh, part of your essays in your HSC, how it's a strategy, how can it be effectively used as a strategy. All right, now, this is uh, strategies are the things that a business can put in place to improve the financial performance of a business. And I'm, I think I've said before, but the financial strategy we're looking at today is cash flow management. So if you're asked from your uh, scenario, if you're asked based on, you know, one of the two um, final essays that you need to write about with the case studies. Um, for cash flow management or businesses is lacking in cash flow, what are the things that can be put in place to respond effectively to this? Then you need to be talking about from the dot point in strategies, cash flow management, all right? And you need to be able to mention that you put in place cash flow statements and use the three key strategies of distribution of payments, discounts for early payments and can you remember the last one starts with f it's not about what you're thinking factoring okay factoring remember that kids always seem to forget that one now cash flow management is a strategy because it is something that the finance uh, business function can do to help improve the finances in particular the cash flow of the business now when we think about the objective it's trying to meet it's not um, you know, profitability as such, it's not solvency. What objective of the five parts of the five objectives of financial management is it trying to meet? And okay, we're talking about liquidity. This and working capital management both try to improve a business liquidity. This won't improve really the liquidity ratio, but it is focusing on that liquidity objective. It uses the cash flow statement throughout the strategies I said before to be able to improve cash flow. Uh, and also meet that liquidity objective. All right. Now, cash flow management. This looks at the management or the overseeing of a business's cash flow, money and accounts receivable, etc., coming into the business versus money, accounts payable, etc., going out of the business. All right now, kids get really confused between cash flow management and working capital management. I'll give you a bit of tip. I got really confused the difference between the two when I first started teaching it. It's something that's similar, but different, and it is different. Hope listening to this will help you. So I'm saying here, note it is different to working capital. In the cash flow refers to money, electronic or cash, coming into the business versus money going out of the business. Now that's what cash flow is. I want you to think of a bank account, your business bank account, cash coin all are coming in, Cash coin all are going out. These days, it's primarily electric, okay, or electronic. It's not, you know, actual physical cash as such, but it can be. But it's generally electronic. But it's still your bank account, money in, money out. Whereas working capital refers to what would happen if a business was required to pay all its current liabilities all at once. Doesn't have enough CA on the balance sheet, current assets to do so. So working capital is really looking at the balance sheet and your current assets compared to your current liabilities. All right, and working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. Working cap the working capital ratio is your current assets divided by your current liabilities. Two to one is what you're after. So we're thinking about it from that ratio perspective with working capital, not what we're doing now. Cash flow management, be thinking about a bank account coin in, coin out, and be thinking about your cash flow statement. All right, an example is in the short term between the two, both the principal and the interest must be paid in full, then this would be working capital. Whereas the ongoing interest repayment and not the principal is more cash flow because it's just, you don't have to pay everything at once. It's just the, the interest on the loan that's coming out of your bank account at that time. Now, there's two key tools or ways to see our business is going in relation to cash flow management, and they are budgets. And what do you reckon? It's in the damn syllabus, man. Cash flow statement. 
Now, they're the tools to monitor and control that we mentioned earlier on in processes. In essence, cash flow statements look at cash and other financial inflows and outflows of a business over a particular year. It calculates how much is left in the bank account at the end of each month. If there's a negative amount, the business has cash flow issues. I want you to think about your cash flow statements. All right, for the HSC, look at some past papers. It's usually you've got you know, your January, February, March, April, May, blah, 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 blah. And you look at your opening balance, what comes in your bank account, what goes out of your bank account, what's left over. If it's a if it's $1,000 at the end of February, the very start of March, it's $1,000. That's what cash flow looks at and that's what the cash flow statement does. All right. Now there's three strategies. There's three strategies that can be used to deal with cash flow issues. They are, test yourself. They're from the syllabus without looking, see if you can remember. One starts with D, two starts with D, one starts with F. You've got distribution of payments, good. If you said discounts for early payments, good. If you said factoring, good. Three out of three, I'm assuming, perhaps not. What a distribution of payments. It's like spreading payments throughout the year. That's what distribution of payments are. I'll give you the example. I think I gave the same example in an earlier YouTube clip. With my home loan, just not my home loan, with my um, house or home and contents insurance, just say it is $1,000 a year. Well, let's say uh, $1,200 a year because my maths is bad. $1,200 a year. I can pay that annually once, but geez, my bank account's going to take a big hit at that time and I might find myself in the red, not good. I want to stay in the black. So what I could do is to distribute the payments I'm making, spread them out over the entire year. I might pay monthly if I can. So instead I'd be paying 100 bucks a month times 12 months, that equals that same $1,200. And I'm less likely to have that big hit, well I'm not, and therefore I'm less likely to go into the red for one month or the two, should spread out. The next strategy we've got is discount for early payments. You can't make this crap up, this stuff. When you're asked this question, it is so easy. You just follow what the syllabus tells you. It's not hard. Discounts for early payment, it's what it says. If a business needs urgent funds because its customers, I'm Bunnings, my carpenters, my plumbers, aren't paying their accounts to me on time, this can lead to a cash shortage. You know, I still gotta make my payments too. Well, I'm not getting the revenue into my bank account because that bugger, that person's not paying it. All my trades aren't paying me. All right, so a business can encourage its clients, its carpenters if it's Bunnings, its plumbers if it's Bunnings, to pay their bills by offering, what might it be it's a discounts for early payment? Discounts, offering discounts. This increases cash coming into the business and therefore the business's bank and thus improving a business cash flow. Now, this is about improving the income side of cash flow, money coming into your bank account. All right, we're getting there. The last strategy we can use and talk about is factoring. This refers to selling a business's accounts receivable to a third party. They're known as a factoring company. This improves cash flow because the factoring business will pay the accounts receivable straight away and then will chase up the accounts from the non-paying business themselves. You know, you know what debt collectors kind of are. I don't like to use that term. It's not very technical, but it's kind of like that. Third um, party will get that money for you. I'm Bunnings. That carpenter's not paying me that bum. So I ask the factoring company to sort it for me. I pay a fee, you know, if it's delivered, or sometimes I sell it to them. So I might have $1,000 the, the carpenter needs to pay me Bunnings. And so... The factoring company gives me $950 straight away. That's now theirs to chase. I'm free of it, perhaps. Depends on the type of factoring you use. And that business goes and collects the $1,000 from the plumber. Everyone's win-win. I'm Bunnings, I get some money that I may never get or take a long time to get. Factoring company makes 50 bucks because they pay me 950 and they chase up 1,000. And I don't know if everyone's win-win because that bum of a plumber should have paid the money in the first place and they get it chased up. Sometimes they might even have to pay a, a fee. Okay, this again is about improving the income side of cash flow. You might say, well, a thousand bucks is better in your account than 950. So, true. But 
950 or zero or wait another two months till I get it, I want the money in my account. Okay, it's a good thing. All right, guys, thank you again for listening and see you next time. Goodbye.